Hi, my name is Sam Horwell. I'm co-founder and managing director of AMA. Uh, we're a social enterprise uh, based in Aberystwyth and we exist to create the conditions where primary care in Wales thrives now and for future generations. One of the ways that we've been working towards our purpose as an organisation is through our role in, so, in, um, in supporting primary care clusters uh, and how they work together. And we host the All Wales Cluster Lead Group um, and and we've been enabling cluster lead engagement in the accelerated cluster development program. So today I'm delighted to be talking to James Martin. Uh, James is a GP partner at West Key Medical Centre and cluster lead for Cardiff Central Vale. Uh, and my intention really in this conversation, James, is to understand more about how collaboration in primary care has and should really contribute to meeting the needs of the communities um, uh, across Wales and, and in this case, Central Vale, specifically focusing on the opportunities and risks of the Accelerated Cluster Development Programme. So welcome, James. Thanks for taking time. Thanks, Sam. Yeah, good to, good to see you. Great. So to kick things off, um, I guess I'm interested in your view on collaboration in primary care um, and why you think it's important for the communities that we serve that the system enables you and colleagues to work together. Well, I think I think we understand our our community. Well. You know, we, we 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 live in our communities. We work in those communities, and you know, have long term relationships with patients in those communities. So I think we are well placed to to understand the needs of those communities, and then to try and develop services to to fit the the needs of the, of those communities. So that's that's where I think our, our our strengths are, and that's that's why I think we're we're, we're well placed to do that. Great. And and so, you know, I think that connection to your community is is has come through really, really strongly in the work that I've done with you and, and your colleagues over the last year now. Um, and I'm curious, you know, we're now 10 years down the line with clusters. Um, and so I'd be interested to hear what your experience has been around cluster working. So kind of what has it enabled for you and your your practice and your, your patients, but also perhaps some of the the less um, helpful elements of cluster working. What's been challenging and difficult? I've I've gone through. I didn't I didn't start at the very beginning of, of clusters. So I've, I've been been involved um, in a variety of different roles, to be honest. So I started started off in a um, in a practice who was probably not very well engaged with cluster working. To to in all, in all honesty, um, I think our uh, the, the personnel who were involved at that point were, were not. Particularly signed up to the concept of, of cluster working, so I've 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 seen that aspect. Um, I then became involved myself as a as the practice representative for the cluster for a number of years, so I was you know able to experience that aspect of it, and then then moved up into the position of, of cluster lead. So so then had had that role. So I've I've got, so I suppose you could could describe it in that that sort of way. So I've seen it from from different angles. Um, I mean, throughout that time, I've seen clusters change. Uh, you know, I wasn't there right at the start, but you know, it, it, it's undoubted that the clusters are in a very, very different position now from where they were at the start of the process. So that's that's something that perhaps we could we could um, look into perhaps in a bit of detail because I think that that's that's something that's happened spontaneously, possibly slightly by design, but it's, it's certainly that 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 has that has happened, and I think you know responding to that in an appropriate way is is important and acknowledging the changes that have happened is probably important to think about where we're trying to get to so that's something that i would say but my my overriding impression of of what clusters have been able to do is you know, there are specific projects that we've been able to achieve you know i i very much still i'm quite focused on primary care and the primary care aspects of it i know there's a ambition to to expand that uh, into the wider sort of primary care team but the the, the gms aspects are, are, are at the moment still you know, very close to my heart so there are projects that i that, that we've done that we, that we can discuss but the other thing that i would want to mention is is the way that the cluster has enabled a group of practices who are who are seven independent contractors to play nicely together and work together as a as a collective aim, and that that in itself is 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 quite a challenge and is 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 a is a mindset shift from from where we were before, and that I think is is again a specific thing that's probably worth 
discussing and, and, and drilling out down into sort of the benefits of that and some of the challenges of that perhaps. Okay, so let's let's talk, let's unpack a little bit. So before we kind of get to the future, so so talk to me a little bit about some of the changes that you've seen then. So so how have clusters changed? Um, and perhaps kind of reflecting on whether you think the accelerated cluster development program may support or not that that change in the future. I think at the start, it wasn't it wasn't clear what the purpose of clusters was. I think that I think that was that's a fairly widely held held view. Certainly, that's that's my view, and I think other people have 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 acknowledged that. Um, so we met we met together. We discussed we discussed some things. We it, th there wasn't a, a a clear sort of strategic aim in the way that I think we probably do have a strategic aim now. So one of the things we were uh, you know, able to do is, is as a group, we 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 set up we what we wanted our cluster to achieve. So we have we have two main aims within within the Central Vale cluster. Um, we every project we do wants to be a project that has benefit to the community and every project we do should have a degree of um, a sustainability impact so to, to try and help promote um, primary care sustainability. So all the things that we that we that we do have those two two aims. So that's our sort of that's our mission statement. So I remember when we uh, so we do we do have a mission statement in the Central Vale cluster, which I remember thinking was a, a little bit naff and a little bit cheesy when we together, but I think it has been beneficial to try and try and give that 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 focus perhaps. So so We've we've got a clearer aspect, a clearer view on what, what we want to do. The other thing that uh, sorry my light turns off and on from time to time. Um, so a clearer aspect of what we want to do. Obviously, the the funding has increased. You know, funding has doubled in in the time. So you know, in a way, that's great. You know, extra funding, you can do more projects. However, doubling the funding double the, doubles the amount of work you have to do from a cluster lead perspective. And, and we've never really acknowledged that. And you know, the 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 when I, you know, in fact, just just prior to this, I was looking through old old budgets that I've got and old budgets now, and you know, a, a previous old budget is is a couple of lines like this. The current budget is a is a, you know, a four or five times the size, and just just the amount of work is just very much higher than than it used to be. So that is something that I think needs to be acknowledged and and probably needs to be to be built into any sort of future planning is is the the amount of work that's involved. But I think the the overriding thing and the most important thing is 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 how certainly locally we've been able to work well together and work um, together as a cohesive group of, of practices. I know that's not the case everywhere, um, and I think we're quite lucky to to have that. But that has enabled us to to do some things which which I think have been really 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 beneficial, particularly for COVID. And, and one thing that. I think again is, is probably worth discussing at some point would be um, uh, the memorandum of understanding that we were able to put into place with another disaster sort of scenarios which I think would have been not impossible but would have been ever so much more challenging without the structure of the clusters to to be able to enable those discussions enable that that idea about collective working that actually in this together and you know if if my next door next door neighbours practice falls over that directly impacts on us and, and you know we're not we might be independent contractors but we're we're sort of in the in the same boat in a way as well so so it's it's that that mindset of, of, of cohesiveness that I think is probably the the greatest benefit apart from the individual projects that we've done. Mm. So I mean I think there's so much that we could talk about and I know we haven't got we haven't got the time that I'd like to spend kind of unpicking all of those little bits and actually understanding a little bit more about some of the detailed projects and maybe we can do that another time. Um, and I'm kind of curious because you've talked about some of the things that you know has been made possible and perhaps a change in scale and that brings challenge with it and in terms of the workload. Um, the Accelerated Cluster Development Programme um, sets out some quite ambitious um, changes to how um, clusters might organise themselves and and the role that they may play in, in the in the system. Um, I'd be interested to hear your reflections on how um, the accelerated cluster development program kind of you know takes you towards more of a solutions to some of those challenges that you're experiencing, or whether you feel like actually there's also some additional risks that that program brings to you and colleagues? I mean, I think it's fair to say that I, I am uh, probably one of the people who 
has yet to be completely convinced by the direction of travel of, of the accelerated cluster program. Um, my probably fundamental concern about it is that I don't feel that we have sufficiently empowered and and develop the structures to support clusters as they currently stand. So many things that I would like to do that I am not able to do because the, the structure of the cluster doesn't doesn't enable it. And my my sort of concern really about the direction of travel is that we're there's a, there's a very lofty ambition and and the idea is that clusters will you know have a far expanded remit feel we've really got it nailed yet as they currently stand. From my perspective, I think it would be much more sensible to keep clusters relatively close to where they are at the moment, but make them work function, make them function well, give them the support, enable them to do the projects as they set up, rather than putting loads of bells and whistles on it, expanding, expanding the remit, bringing in other things, you know, the, that, that is my, that's my fundamental concern about it. Okay, so so if we if we were to um, talk a little bit about some of the things that you think need fixing, so you've, we've touched, a, we've started to talk a little bit about scale and capacity, um, but where you are sitting now, if there were, if you were able to, um, we talk about adding to Alan Laurie's uh, to do list. Uh, so if if we wanted to kind of set Alan a challenge, say actually, if accelerated cluster development did these things for Central Vale maybe i'd you know perhaps that would shift your position are there some things that that would really make a difference to you right now absolutely so we need to define uh what the structure of clusters so what kind of support do cluster needs need sorry cluster leads need to enable them to do the things that they want to do so what levels of project management are required to enable clusters to function what level of administrative support and all, all of those sort of the, the machinery of them, I think, should be should be defined and and, pro and provided. And it's not. And that it, it, you know, we're, we're hamstrung as we currently are in terms of doing the project that we want to do because that that machinery isn't in place. And that's where I think let's get that machinery in place first. Let's show we can do it before trying to make it more ambitious. So that. That is that would be my number one ask would be to to look into that to to actually see what what do clusters need to be able them to to function you know is it is it you know, boots on the ground type of personnel in terms of you know project management um other, you know other sorts of clinical support analytic support you know so we've got these projects really show whether they're working or not what. Who, who's going to be looking into these projects? We, you know, we've tried to roll out QI methodology to, to cluster projects, and there's been you know, there's a little bit of, of, of QI support, but there's nowhere near enough um, QI support to enable you know adequate, decent QI processes to be used on, on cluster projects. So we, you know, we we'd like to do some of this stuff, but there just isn't the capacity to do it. That's one aspect of it. I suppose another aspect of it is is to really. The the, the entity status of clusters they you know, they don't have legal legal entity status staff uh, there are obviously advantages and disadvantages of that model in terms of risks and, and I think different clusters are probably at different places with where they want to be with that but you know, locally we've had in, you know enormous problems with trying to get projects off the ground you know really really good projects you know there's a project that I do um, in terms of trying to set up a local pain service to, to help support patients with chronic pain, which, you know, we've developed this, we've got the, you know, we know exactly what we want to do, but we just off the ground because we don't have the project management support, we don't have the ability to recruit into it. We, we've had enormous issues with health boards, um, job matching, banding pro problems, which have taken, you know, eight to resolve and still haven't been resolved. And it, it's really frustrating situation where we've we've got what I think is a brilliant clinical project which will make a real difference to, to patients' lives, and mm. you have I don't have the ability to get it off the ground because of the problems that we've got. And I'd like to fix the problems that we've got rather than think, oh, let's turn clusters into something, bringing in all the other aspects of the primary care, and look at look at different boards and 
planning committees and you know the language the, the language in the in the report is is not not a language that I really understand to me so I would like are to be empowered and be able to do the things that we want to do rather than make them grander at this stage yeah it's my my feeling yeah I, I think it's really interesting to hear you talk because I think you know certainly what what you and and others and and you know we've talked over the last year as part of the the cluster leads group around autonomy coherence and engagement and and it is what i've heard really clearly is what matters to you all um is 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 a is about that practical getting stuff done the doing is what really really matters um and, and i think what what i've also heard is that you know we operate in a system where governance matters um, and so they'll, and I, I think the intention around the accelerated cluster development program is to, is to enable what matters to the cluster leads in a system that is big and complex and, and needs a, you know, a governance process around that. So, um, and, and it's really, really challenging. I suppose one of the, um, one of the things that I'm interested in exploring a little more is around, um, is around the, the delivery side of accelerated cluster development. So so there is, so you talk about, you know, creating the conditions where the clusters can employ and, and, and actually get stuff done in a more agile way. And, and accelerated cluster development program does enable that. Um, so I guess I'd be interested to to hear from you, you know, whether there is appetite in Central Vale and whether actually you have got some intentions to perhaps lean into that part of the program. Maybe that's the bit that you could, you could you know, hook some energy into around creating delivery vehicles that could do the things that you've just talked about? So it, I think it depends on how delivered, um, you know, the, the, how the programme is delivered, because you know, there has been talk about, you know, tailoring the, the, um, the acceleration to different areas and there, there is different appetite. And, you know, if, if there is the ability to you know, cherry pick the parts of it that work for you, uh, you know that would be that would you know there would certainly be appetite for that. You know I have I, I know of clusters that are going down the um, with the uh, community interest company. Interest company, so thanks. Yeah, so this type of models and you know that that I think that's that's very noble and you know I'm 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 in in awe of those clusters who are able to try and get their teeth into that type of thing because it it seems like an you know an enormous piece of work to try and to try and to, to undertake that you know and I, I absolutely take my hats off those those pioneers who are going down that route because that is you know from my point of view extremely impressive um so I you know, if there is an ability for the accelerated cluster program to to deliver, you know, improved you know, project delivery mechanisms, then yeah, I, I would absolutely be 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 up for that for for sure. Mm. Too bureaucratic, and you know, if if it, if it, if it reduces, you know, reading reading the report as it, it it seems to add huge levels of bureaucracy and 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 groups and I, I don't know who would be attending these 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 boards and partnerships and it, it doesn't specify who that would be are these new people are these existing people I, it, so it, I, I haven't got a, a, a vision of, of, of how that would work I guess yeah no I, I think I think that's all, all fair and, and I think it is a complex it's a complex move um, and and I think it's really important to hear, you know, your your view on it, and, and you won't be alone. You know, we we know that there are colleagues out there who aren't cluster leads who will be even further away from the detail of this. Um, and even those cluster leads that have been involved in some of these conversations, it's it's a you know it's a it's a complex and very ambitious program. And I think it's important to hear um, your concerns. So I suppose just trying to kind of wrap up. And as I said, I could talk to you for a long time, James. I feel feel sad we only have this short time but um you know having having reflected on you know collaboration does matter to communities and it's really it's really clear to me that you know primary care are the people who are closest to communities and that and that you have experienced the the benefits and the potential of collaboration 
um, when the system allows you to, and you talked a little bit about your memorandum of understanding, where kind of all bits are off and let's just get, you know, let's just get it done for the community. And that's really powerful. Um, and also I've heard that, you know, what really matters to you right now is, can I just keep, can I just get this right? This thing that's in front of me that feels so precious and so important. Let's get this right. This, you know, this, 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 the complexity of something more strategic feels maybe a step too far. And I think, you know, hopefully that's fair, um, you know, a fair summary of what I've heard from you. Um, so just, you know, what are your, as a kind of closing comment, what what is Central Vale's plan over the next kind of, you know, few months um, into 22, 23? What, what's your, you talked about your two areas of purpose, but have you got, um, you know, any plans to, to perhaps move in some of those directions that the accelerated cluster development talk about. So, I mean, we've we've got you know we've got lots of plans of, of, of what we want to do. And one of the things that we, we we haven't even touched on um, is is an unscheduled primary care hub in in. Oh. Um, so, you know, to to a lot of the the cluster projects, it's it's gone through lots of different guises and it has been cluster funded for a period of time. So, it's, it's sort of it, quite quite heavily involved in that even though it isn't technically a cluster project and so to employ some paramedics into into it um so they'll be cluster funded but they'll be working out of our um upc upcc hub so we you know we are we did a, a multidisciplinary team to work out of that uh, so that's that's partly um upcc funded partly cluster funded and that is is a is a cornerstone to our primary care sustainability model in in Central Vale. So, you know, work work will continue with that. Um, we have had to go outside of the structures of the health board um, to to employ staff into that because of the we so we've had to employ staff by practices and then and then back for um, the staff time in just because the you know the bureaucracy and the mechanism is 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 so onerous that we. We, we just haven't been able to, to employ staff as we perhaps would have liked to, although we have got some some staff who are employed with with um, with health work as well. So that's that's sort of one of the, the challenges that we've we've had. Um, let's say we, I want to try and get this pain pain clinic idea. And I've been trying to do this, but it feels like I'm sort of wading through treacle to try and try and do that. And and, and I'm not out of the, the sort of cork bar of that yet. And we've also got another exciting project which we're trying to get off the ground in terms of improving wound care for patients. Uh, so and there's 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 really um, a lot of um, you know, interested buy-in from all the all the stakeholders in, in that project. And I'm really hopeful that that one will 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 get off the ground over the next couple of months. So that. Quite an innovative project to really upskill practices and, and and bolster the capacity to do wound care and uh, possibly bring compression brandaging into into primary care, so we can accelerate how um, uh, wound uh, wound healing and, and that should have a major impact on practices and patients and hopefully secondary care as well. So you know, trying to get that off the ground, but again, it's getting the the, the support in place to enable this project, which again I think is a great clinical project. You know, can we really demonstrate that what we're doing is 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 of benefit? You know, do we have the support and help and, and team in place to to to? You know, we've got this project that, that we think is great, and we just want want to try and get it off the ground. And 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 when we do get it off the ground, be able to prove that it's been of benefit. Because what I'd like long term for that to do is to be potentially rolled out. And same with the pain pain clinic, to get rolled out on a wider footprint. But in order you really have to be clear that your you know your project is well designed well evidenced mm -hmm. what I would like I would like the the ability to, to be able to do that um, mm -hmm. those, are, those are some of the, the things which you've got going on but there's 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 oodles of stuff going on there always <laughs> oh, I, I really wish we had more time and and I think um, I'm really grateful for you I know you're in the middle of a clinic day um, but thank you for, for taking time to, to chat to us. And I think, you know, my my take home from this is that, you know, as you know, Amma, we, we exist in service to you. And, you know, we've heard loud and clear what matters to cluster leads um, around kind of delivering this autonomy, coherence and engagement with the system. And and I think, you know, the Accelerated Cluster Development Program is, is, is certainly an avenue where we can do that. And, you know, if there's anything that we can do to support you going forward, then then just let us know. But thanks so much for your time. And um, have a great day. Sam, good to talk.